Hi guys, Craig at the Barefoot Forge here, and today we're gonna to talk about this 66 pound cast tool steel anvil from China. We got this one on Amazon, but they also exist on eBay and elsewhere, and this costs under $200 shipped to your door, brand new. So this could be a great anvil for people getting into the craft. Let's take a closer look at it. This anvil's 66 pounds. That's a pretty good weight. It's a good enough weight starting out. Usually I recommend an anvil that's more like 100 pounds, but this is gonna do fine. There's this ratio of how big a hammer you should use with the anvil. It should never be more than 2% of the weight of the anvil. So since this is 66 pounds, it's rated for a 1.25 pound hammer. This is a hammer I really love and we use a lot in classes. This is a 1.1 pound hammer. It's super forgiving. When you're starting out and you don't have the proper technique and you don't have the strength and you don't have the stamina, this baby is going to be super forgiving. We get this on Amazon, it's super cheap and it's really going to allow you to get a lot of control and to work through the fundamentals of making leaves and wall hooks and even cranking out a knife or two using this anvil without wearing this anvil out and building up your skill set. By the time you're ready to move up to a bigger hammer and bigger pieces, you're probably ready to move up to a bigger anvil. So start out with this and start with a properly sized hammer. The hardy hole is kind of an odd thing. It's three quarter inches in size. so. I would have liked to see a one inch or even a seven eighths inch hardy hole. Three quarters is a little small and it's kind of in the wrong spot. It's, it's right here. It should probably be more over here, but it does weirdly go through to a square hole all the way at the bottom, right here in the foot. So in theory, you could put something like a raising stake in here. You could build hardy tools that have a three quarter inch shank that's like 10 inches long and it would go all the way in and it would gain the extra support of the bottom foot. That might be kind of useful. I've never really seen that in a big or an old world anvil, but I don't know. Maybe they stumbled on something? I don't know. The Pritchell hole is a round hole that's here where no hole should really be because this is normally used for chiseling and punching and bending operations, but they put their round hole right there. That's a little bit weird to me, but hey, whatever. It's three quarters inches in size as well, but because it goes through the horn and there's so much depth to the horn, sending a drift or something through it, it's gonna kinda suck because the, the horn is like four inches deep and then there's maybe only three inches below it. So if you had a drift that's say four inches long, it won't go through this and come out at the bottom. It's gonna sorta get trapped in this, this no man's land right here. So that's gonna suck. This anvil comes in really quite spectacular condition. The face is perfectly flat, sanded flat with like a 300 grit sandpaper. It's really quite fine. The edges are incredibly crisp, maybe too crisp, maybe too sharp. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is start by planishing these edges over a little bit, just grinding them to a little bit of a different radius, probably especially back here. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with back here, but it's a little bit of a weird shape to me. I'm also definitely gonna take the paint off the horn because the horn, it's just not gonna be that useful if every time you put something on it, it releases carcinogenic Chinese paint. So I'm thinking we should probably get some of the paint off that, clean these edges up, and otherwise it should be good to go. One of the things that's most interesting to me about this particular anvil it's got pretty good rebound. Rebound is really the measure of the quality of an anvil. An anvil with better rebound means you work less hard, you get more work done, and you get work done in less time. An anvil with 20% rebound is going to be a lot harder to work on than an anvil with 40% rebound. That anvil with 40% rebound is gonna get your work done in half the time. It's gonna make you more money in an hour. You're gonna go home less tired. You're gonna go home less sore. A better anvil is going to make you a better blacksmith because you're gonna be able to do this better. So an anvil with 80% rebound, that's pretty impressive. Rebound is an indication of the hardness of the face. And that tells me that the face of this anvil is actually pretty hard. This must be some form of tool steel, even though they don't tell us what it is. Regardless, they hardened it well. So it should be pretty durable and it should be a really nice work surface that allows you to grow in this hobby without wearing yourself out. I'm excited to see.